25th regular meeting of the 2016-2017 Common Council to order. Would the clerk please call the roll? Uh, yes, we have 14 present by a remote. Okay, thank 13, you. Right? There's 13. We have three missing. Yeah. Right. We, we have a quorum of 11. We have a quorum of 11. And 13 who are eligible to vote. Right. Sorry. Right, so we don't have 14. Correct. Okay. Okay, 13 it is. Sorry. Please read the quote for the day. Well, this is appropriate. Precision of communication. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Is important, more important than ever in our era of hair raising, hair trigger balances when a false or misunderstood word may create as much disaster as a sudden thoughtless act. Thank you very much. Next, I'd like to call up uh, Dylan Lindau. Uh, Dylan Lindau is, uh, has achieved the rank of Eagle Scout as a member of Troop 801. We give him our congratulations for his uh, achievement. Uh, to earn that rank of Eagle Scout, uh, he needed to fill the requirements in areas of leadership, service, and outdoor skills. This included earning 19 merit badges. Being an Eagle Scout carries a special significance, especially when you consider that only 5% of all Boy Scouts achieve this rank. The fact that uh, you have met this stringent test is a real credit to yourself, Dylan, and your family. I'm certain that they're extremely proud of your accomplishments. Dylan's Eagle Scout project was to build a gateway at the entrance of a half mile Maple Forest Trail at the Elwood H. May Environmental Park. In addition, he built a fire ring, resurfaced the trail, and wood chipped two learning areas for grade school, grade school students. This project was one of many Eagle Scout projects that showcased the planning, determination, and leadership of the elite few who managed to re receive the rank of Eagle. I extend my personal congratulations and uh, those of the entire council to, uh, to you as f for your achievement. Dylan, please now uh, stand and join Dylan as he leads us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Dylan. <gasps> Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from our last council meeting. Alder Person Donahue. Thank you, Chair. I need to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? <coughs> okay, all ayes? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Uh, we have a resignation this evening. I'll turn it over to the city attorney. Uh, we have a resignation from, uh, as a board member, of the Sheboygan Squared Board from William H. Holbrook. He indicates his uh, gratitude for having had the opportunity to serve on the board and offers his best wishes for its continued success. Thank you. Alder Person Donahue. Uh, thank you, uh, Mayor. I move to uh, accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion aye. passes. Uh, next, we'll move on to mayor's appointments. Again, city attorney. Uh, we do have one uh, from, uh, signed by both the mayor and the city administrator uh, to the honorable members of the Common Council, uh, pursuant to General Ordinance 661213, creating Section 2 419 of the Sheboygan Municipal Code relating to the position of Director of Information Technology. We hereby recommend that Greg Fratelka be appointed as the Director of Information Technology, IT for the city of Sheboygan effective immediately. Okay, Alder Person Donahue. Uh, thank you. Uh, as an initial matter, Mayor, I would move to suspend the rules. Second. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. The suspension is uh, based on uh, Mr. Bertelka's uh, presence here in the chamber and the fact that he is ready to commence his job and therefore I would move to confirm his appointment. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those, no, we have to roll, roll call this. Okay, clerk, clerk will call the roll.
Alderman Lewandowski? It won't let me log in, but I vote yes. Thank you. <coughs> 13 ayes. Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to the public forum. City Clerk. Thank you. Uh, we have two this evening. The first one is Mike Brunette. Mike, would you come on up to the front, please? And Mike, can we have your home address? 1925 South 26th Street. Okay, and you'll have five minutes. All right, I'll try to take one. Um, I don't have much, uh, the usual stuff. One, whenever anybody brings up the armory and talks about how old and decrepit it is, you made it that way. That building was awesome. It's the best built building in the city. And it's kind of, you not only let it go, but you accelerated the decay. The bleachers over, uh, are over at uh, Three Sheeps, and it's like there are cleaning trucks in there in winter, whatever. End of the armory. It's what you want. Bye. Uh, the other thing is general knowledge. And it's like communication seems to be the big thing. We're into communications. Sheboygan's going to get better at communicating. It's pretty easy stuff. All you have to do is tell people things when they happen. Actually, maybe before they happen. Maybe before you vote on them. People need to know little things. They need to know what's going on. And it's like, for instance, we just had an election go down, and somebody thought they were going to win by a landslide because everybody they talked to was telling them so. Everybody was behind them. Well, maybe they were talking to the wrong people because there's somebody in this room who's quite excited they were. And nothing against somebody, that somebody's Marcus. Marcus gets to walk in, and it's like I heard one of my favorite quotes, and once again, Marcus, nothing personal or whatever on this. Don't even really know ya. But, but it's like on the day when all the people were here, when you're um, going around with Maeve Quinn, and, it, and it's like your comment was, Nobody even really knows me, and now I'm going to win. You were right. And it's kind of like, good or bad, that ain't it. Welcome. Welcome, Henry. I love Henry. And it's like, that'll be cool. And it's like that he's here. And it's like, it's not really what I wanted to talk to. I was going to sign up because I thought there was a meeting on Monday night. But once again, my bad. And it's like, it's a little communications thing. And on this part, I screwed up. But I thought it was kind of important for people to know some major developments that are going in town that were pretty much totally behind closed doors to the point that most of the people looking at me don't even know they happened yet. You will soon. The press knew. WHBL knew. But I'm listening to WHBL this morning, and I found out during the news you can use beef and turkey in a chili, okay? But did I find out anything else? No, but that's kind of how radio news is. But I'm an old newspaper guy, and I live and die by it, take it seriously, love it, and it's like, and if you aren't doing your job, move on, man, and it's kind of like, report on things. You're not here to play around. And it's like, I always thought it was telling people something original, and I tell them, if you get everything you know from a newspaper, you know less than people who read nothing at all. And this is coming from a newspaper guy. And it's kind of like, and all of a sudden out of the blue, I'm like, well, I better check on that. Benjamin Franklin came up with that. And it's kind of like, it's just what it is. It's like, you can't trust your news sources. It's just what it is. You need to get original documents. You need to get involved in community. You need to get out. You can't blame these guys. You can't blame the paper. You can't blame anybody. If you want to know what's going on in town, leave the house. Talk to people. And outside of that, I got a beer waiting at Major Lee's. I'm out. You guys have fun. Thank you, Mike. Next on the list is Mike Froll. <clears throat> <coughs> Mike, can 
we get your home address, please? You bet. Good evening. Uh, I'm currently at W6598 County Road JP Elkhart Lake. However, I grew up in Sheboygan. My office is in Sheboygan. I've been active in our community for my entire life. I'm also uh, an avid voter. I've rented a slip in our Harbor Center Marina for the last 21 years. I was appointed to Sheboygan's Marina Committee in 2005. I chaired that committee for several years and I remained a member when the Marina Committee was merged with Parks and Forestry. I chaired the Marina Parks and Forestry Commission for the last three years. I also serve on the board of Visit Sheboygan, which is our new tourism entity. I'm addressing you tonight to ask that you do not eliminate the Marina Parks and Forestry Commission. Our marina and our abundance of waterfront parks are the envy of communities throughout the Midwest. Our location along the shores of Lake Michigan is an important tourism draw and has a positive economic impact on our community. When our marina was developed 23 years ago, uh, the Marina and Harbor Committee was established to oversee the operation of the marina and our boat, other boating facilities. That committee was merged with Parks and Forestry, as I mentioned, five years ago. The new committee has been extremely active with the transition to a new marina operator, the development of additional recreational facilities, and most recently uh, promoted the Lakefront Water Safety Task Force that has made recommendations to improve waterfront safety. There is now a proposal to eliminate uh, marina parks and forestry and have Public Works a Committee handle all of the items that were previously addressed by the prior committees. Rather than eliminating marina parks and forestry, please consider keeping and strengthening that committee to support the marina parks and recreational facilities that are so important to our citizens and our visitors alike. At last night's Marina Parks and Forestry Commission meeting, the group passed a unanimous motion to recommend that the committee be retained and strengthened. I'd really appreciate it if you could support that motion. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. That is it for this evening. Thank you very much. Next, we'll go on to Mayor's announcements. First, I want to congratulate everyone on the election that was just held. Uh, we had uh, some great competition in all the different roles, and I want to thank all the candidates for being interested in leading uh, the city of Sheboygan, being a part of the solution, and making us a better community. Uh, next, I'd like to take the opportunity to recognize one of our older persons who is not going to be able to join us for a meeting two weeks from now, and I'd ask Alderman Joe Heideman to please step forward. I want to recognize Joe for his 10 years of dedicated service as an older person for the city of Sheboygan. Uh, Joe served the, as the committee whole chairman. He also served on various standing committees, the Public Works Committee as vice chairman and chairman, salary and grievances as a member and vice chairman, the Finance Committee and the Law and Licensing Committee. Joe also served on some other committees that were very important, the Blue Harbor Resort Committee, the Building Use Committee, Group Health Insurance Committee, the Board of Housing Appeals and Fair Practices, the Board of Marina Parks and Forestry Commissioners, Sheboygan Transit Commission, and the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee. Joe, it's my pleasure to give you this certificate of appreciation by the City of Sheboygan for 10 years of dedicated service as an older person from April of 2007 to April 17th of, of 2017. Thank you very much. Thank you all very much. Um, <clears throat> I want to start by thanking my wife and my family for their support over the years. There are many times that the responsibility as aldermen takes center stage. The fact that they accepted this and understood meant a lot to me. My congratulations to Ryan. If you need any help, feel free to ask me. My mother said to me a long time ago, try to give back to your community <coughs> through church, public service, or just being a good neighbor. Having served the 8th District in the City of Sheboygan has been an honor for me. 
Many individuals that I have served with on this council and others over the years will be in my mind and in my heart. A lot of positive changes have happened while I've been in office. I hope Sheboygan continues to go forward and provide for its citizens. I want to thank Alderman Jim Bourne for his support and guidance. As an elected official, you should never stop learning. And I needed special training because I came from a community west of here that took great pride in not overtaxing and operating within their means. Jim helped explain to me the way things were done in Sheboygan, and that made it easier for me to serve the 8th District. I do not know what, hold, what the future holds for me, and I will always continue to look at options to help my neighbors and my friends. I want to thank the current council and previous councils for giving me a great experience. I want, also want to thank the mayors that I served under for giving me the opportunity to, to better serve Sheboygan through committee assignments. I want to also thank all the department heads for helping me while I served. I've always thought of, the, of, thought of council work as being part of a team, not a political party. Your responsibility to, are, is to all the individual taxpayers of your district in Sheboygan. Thank you very much. I've had a great time. Next item is a proclamation. Uh, this proclamation is for Arbor Day celebration. Uh, David, you want to come forward? In, uh, whereas in 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that the special day um, be set aside for the planting of trees. And whereas this holiday called Arbor Day was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska, and whereas Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world, and whereas trees can, be re, uh, can reduce erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, cut heating bills and cooling costs, and uh, produce moder and moderate the temperature with, and also produce clean air. They produce a life-giving oxygen and provide habitat for wildlife. And whereas trees are renewable resources, giving us paper, wood in, uh, for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other wood products. And whereas trees in their city increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of business areas, and beautify our committee, community. And whereas trees, wherever they are planted, are a source of joy and spiritual renewal. I now, therefore, Mike Vandersteen, Mayor of the City of Sheboygan, do proclaim April 28th of 2017 is Arbor Day. David, present that to you. And the Arbor Day celebration will be taking place at Maywood this year, and it'll be probably about 9.30 to 10 o'clock in the morning if anyone's interested. Thank you very much. Next, we have uh, two public hearings. The first one is item 2.1, hearing number 22 of 1617 to amend the city of Sheboygan's future land use map of the city's comprehensive plan in order to change the land use classification of property located at 1031 Maryland Avenue from employment to central mixed use. Is there anyone who wishes to be heard? Is there anyone who wishes to be heard? Is there anyone who wishes to be heard? Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to uh, close the hearing. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. The second hearing is item 2.2, .2, hearing number 23 of 1617 to amend the city of Sheboygan's official zoning map to change the use district classification of property located at 1031 Maryland Avenue from class UI and in urban industrial to class CC central commercial classification. Is there anyone who wishes to be heard? Is there anyone who wishes to be heard? Is there anyone who wishes to be heard? Alderperson Donahue. I uh, move to close the hearing. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion aye. passes. Next, we'll move on to the uh, consent agenda. Uh, it'll include items 3.2 through 3.18. Alderperson Donahue. Uh, I move to uh, accept and file all reports of officers, accept and adopt all reports of committees, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank
Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on any of the items included in the consent agenda? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Alderman Lewandowski. Oh, thank you. <coughs> 13 eyes. Motion passes. Next is report of officers. Um, that'll include uh, items 4.1 through 4.7. Those will be all referred to various committees. Under resolutions, item 5.1 is resol resolution number 235 of 1617 by Alderperson Bellinger, authorizing, executing, uh, executing an engineering services contract between the city of Sheboygan, the state of Wisconsin, the Wisconsin Department of Transportation, and Kapoor and Associates for the Pennsylvania Avenue Bridge Rehab Rehabilitation Project. Alderperson Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I move to suspend the rules. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. Uh, the reason for suspension is that um, I guess there's an issue with the DOT and they need to have this contract executed by Friday. So uh, in order to get this passed and get the funds established and take care of this, it needs to be done tonight. So that's the reason for that. So, um, so with that, I would move to pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.2 is resolution number 236 mm -hmm. of 1617 by Alderperson Donahue, authorizing the sale of city-owned property in Sheboygan Business Center 1, lot totaling 15.745 acres to KWSBM LLC. Alderperson Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. As an initial matter, uh, it's my understanding that this uh, resolution previously passed uh, needs additional attention. A certified survey map has been done of the property and the title insurance company wishes this council to pass uh, an additional uh, resolution and time is of the essence. With that in mind, I move to suspend the rules. Second. Thank you for that motion. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. I move to uh, put the uh, resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.3 is resolution number 237 of 1617 by Alderperson Jose creating an escrow account of $500,000 for the purpose of granting a property developer who purchases a historic Sheboygan Armory the funds of up to $500,000 that are necessary to raise the building. <laughs> Alderperson Donahue. Um, thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is a, a little unusual. Um, <clears throat> Alderman Jose has uh, drafted this uh, resolution, which we've all had the opportunity to review. Um, he has not signed it. Um, I am not willing to sign it. Uh, I feel that uh, we have explored this uh, territory in uh, great detail. Uh, it calls for the escrow of $500,000 for an indeterminate period of time in the event that someone may show some interest in um, rehabbing uh, the armory. Um, Given the city's uh, efforts uh, in earnest since 2014 to uh, either sell the building, to explore uses for creative um, uh, use of the building, and having had no luck in spite of really significant efforts, um, I feel that this is um, it's unnecessary and uh, not productive of our time. So I guess my question for the city attorney is, if there's no signature on the resolution, would a motion to file be in order? I think just to um, cover all the
all the bases, a motion to file would still be in order. Uh, in that regard, I, I wouldn't uh, move to file this resolution. Thank second. you for that motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a second. Okay, the motion to file is before us. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those, uh, the clerk call the roll, please. Ten eyes, three noes. Motion passes. Items 5.4 through 5.8 will be referred to various committees. Under reports of officers, item 6.1 is RC number 372 of 1617 by the Committee of the Whole, who was referred RO number 258 of 1617 by the City Clerk's Committee in a communication from the Firefighters Local 483 regarding work with the fire department management staff to create a plan that addresses the staffing concerns shared by the union, staff, and the council. Recommends that the document be accepted and placed on file. Alderperson Heidemann. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I move that the reported committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, Alderperson Heidemann, did you have anything else to add? No, sir. Okay, seeing no other lights, um, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. aye. Motion passes. Next item is 6.2, which is an RC number 373 of 1617 by law and licensing, to whom is referred RO number 230 of 1617 by the city clerk submitting various license application and recommends that taxi cab driver's license number 1049 be denied based on his failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on his application, his record of violations related to the licensed activity, his record as a repeat law offender, and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderperson Drawn. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would make a, a motion to uh, move that the report of committee be accepted Second. and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Any discussion on the motion? First, is Moises Chavez here? Oh, I apologize. Thank you. Great. It appears he is not here. Okay. Seeing no other discussion, all those in favor of the motion, one, please. We'll do tell, call the roll on this one. Mention your <coughs> yay or nay. Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Item six point three is RC number three seventy four of sixteen seventeen by the committee of the whole who was referred RC number 368 of 1617 by the Public Works Committee and resolution number 215 of 1617 by Alderperson Bellinger declaring intent to exercise the police power to levy special assessments for the 2017 bituminous resurfacing program for various streets and recommends that the documents be placed on file. Alderperson Heidemann. Thank you, Mayor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopt to file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, Alderperson Heidemann. Well, uh, I'll let somebody else go first. Okay. Alderperson Thiel. Did you have? No. Any other discussion? Alderperson Donahue. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so I've, I've given this a lot of thought since our uh, discussion at the committee as a whole. <clears throat> uh, and I've been torn by it because as I stated before, I am in general <coughs> in favor of elimination of special assessments. I feel they're unfair to individual property owners and so forth. However, this particular approach causes me some concern because of the number of streets that have been outlined in the ordinance. And we have really not made any determination as to which of those projects will or should be eliminated. Um, we haven't looked at sort of a ranking of need, and we also haven't looked at 
the possibility, at least for 2017, that there might be other places where $500,000 may be located so that individual project, I mean, some project would have to be pulled. Um, and so it really seems to me that we ought to take a look at this in just a little bit more detail before we proceed. Um, and therefore, I would uh, move to amend the resolution uh, to uh, refer it to finance for further exploration. Could you please repeat the motion? It's just a motion to refer to finance. Second. Okay, we have a Second. motion to refer to finance. Is that debatable? The motion to refer is debatable. Mm -hmm. any, and any further debate on this referral? Uh, Alderperson Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I'm the person who drew, or put this um, up for um, discussion and to be filed. We, we don't need to send this to uh, the Finance Committee. You know, what's going to come out of the Finance Committee, it's going to get recommended based on the uh, the population of the aldermen that, that, that are sit on that committee that's going to come back as recommended to um, not move forward with filing and you know and that's just going to come back to the council and we're going to have a debate again. We, we debated this thing exhaustively through the committee of the whole and at the um, public works committee meeting. We've got more than enough revenue to deal with our streets. We're borrowing an excessive amount this year to deal with our streets. We've got $2.3 million worth of brand new revenue that uh, we've never had that will be coming in annually to deal with the streets. We've got the garbage fee, the wheel tax, and um, uh, the garbage fee, the wheel tax, and uh, the sales tax. So that's $2.3 million worth of new revenue. Uh, it's, it's onerous, and everybody that spoke out against, that spoke um, against filing at the committee of the whole meeting, there was not one person that said, on the merits, special assessments are awesome and we should just keep doing it because it's a very equitable way to fund our roads. On the contrary, everybody said it's a horrible way, it's not equitable, it's unfair, it's unjust. Those were some of the, the adjectives that were used to, to describe you know, this action, this police action that would, we would take, that would take place. The people on Camelot Boulevard uh, are going to have larger lots. Uh, a lot of them are going to have in excess of $5,000 special assessments. This does hurt the people that are uh, um, on fixed incomes and low income uh, the most. And it's an unfair thing. We've got enough money. We, let's end it for 2017 and we can revisit it for 18 and I would certainly put a resolution forward for uh, 2018 to, to get rid of it then too. But again, we've got more than enough revenue and we haven't even started the road projects or looked at what we're doing yet for all this revenue. Uh, we've got a brand new paver uh, that we're going to be more efficient with the paver. So there's going to be um, some efficiencies there too. So um, I don't believe that you know eliminating this unfair assessment is going to detriment our road projects moving forward. Quite the contrary, we are very fortunate with the revenue streams that we have. There is not another. There's rarely or virtually no other community in the state that has a wheel tax and a special assessments. I've called them all and spoke to the the uh, public works directors and the finance directors at length. And uh, I gave, you know, um, uh, I gave Billy a copy of that and he's got the documentation. So um, again, I would just like to see this eliminated once and for all and um, not have us be the only com community in the state that has a wheel tax and a special assessment. Thank you. Uh, Alderperson Bellinger, I seem to remember a different number on Camelot Boulevard as far as average assessments. Ryan Sasma, if there's no objection, would you please come up and clarify those average assessments on Camelot Boulevard? Mayor, I didn't say average, I said some of them. And if you look at them, I know. Oh, I, I think you're skewing to, to the higher number, and I'd like Ryan to give us a better average. I would like it stated that I never said average, and you know, and you don't misrepresent what I said, please. Thank you. Excuse me, Mayor. Just a minute. Yeah. Ryan's got the floor now. Yeah, these are the handouts that I had last mm, Monday or Tuesday for the Committee of the Whole meeting. 
<coughs> on Camelot Boulevard, like I said, we, for the resurfacing, I had a resurfacing number, which is a hard number because we have a flat fee cost. But for the curb and gutter, that's always a worst case scenario. So whatever frontage they had, it was assessed at $20 and $20 and 85 cents. But as I mentioned at the Committee of the Whole, not all the time all the curb and gutter is re removed or re removed and replaced for, for a homeowner. A lot of times it's 0%, but sometimes it is 100%. What is the range of assessments for the street resurfacing, Ryan? Um, for Camelot Boulevard? Yes, please. On the one block that I looked at, I just, I just took one of, the, one of the blocks on Camelot. It ranges from approximately $5,600 all the way down to about $3,100. So that is, that's, that's, that's the range of, the, of that one block, which is about 10 houses. Thank you very much. Um, next, Alder Person Heideman. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, quite honestly, I don't know what that had to do with the referring this document back to finance. Um, that's the motion that's before us, right? That's what we're going to have to vote on. So having a discussion on what's happening with assessments or having Ryan come up to explain to us what the assessment are has absolutely nothing to do with sending this document to finance. I'm not going to support sending it to finance. I think we talked about it at, at, uh, enough at the Committee of the Whole uh, that we should, be able, we should be acting on this tonight. Thank you for those comments. Uh, Alder Person Donahue. And, and, and all I want to say is <clears throat> the plain fact is we may have a lot of money, but we're going to have $500,000 less for road repairs in 2017. And my question is, and I'm wondering if this would be a reason to refer it to finance, which we may decide, it, we may hear from Public Works that it makes sense to take away like a block from each project. Or we may hear that um, Ashland Avenue, I'm just guessing, Ashland Avenue is so bad that that's going to be prioritized top, but maybe Camelot is not as bad. Then, because dealing with a major source of income for the city, just with one committee of the whole meeting and a council meeting, which will set a precedent for what we do in the future, is actually a, a matter of some weight and concern and I think um, I think that we can just slow down just a little bit to take a look at it. My purpose in this is not, as I say, I don't like special assessments any more than anybody else does. It's just to, let, let's figure out in a logical, rational way how we're going to use reduced resources. It's $500,000 <coughs> plus. We still may have lots and lots of money, but it is $500,000 less to make these repairs, and that's going to have an impact. So we can look at that, and then, <clears throat> and I maybe shouldn't even open this can of worms, but we do have various reserves in various spots. And while we can't fund the, de the deficit that lack of special assessments would provide by using our reserves on a long-term basis, maybe in 2017, we could do that. If Dave Beeble comes in and says, these roads are rated very badly, I don't know if they are or not. They're, you know, we have our numbering system and these are really bad roads that won't, you know, that need to get repaired. Maybe just for 2017, we could look at a reserve and finance could talk about that. So this is not to, to decide that we aren't gonna do it or whatever, it's to be thoughtful, considerate, and, and, and really planful about the best way of handling the reduction of, of income for the street, for the, our street programs. So, because what we have planned here is all the money that Alderman Bellinger was talking about. And we're gonna take, we just need to realize we are taking away 500,000. So I'm thinking finance can look at it, we can be a little bit more reflective and planful and then come back to the council with our recommendation that Ashland from South 10 to South 17th can wait until next year. Or in some reserve fund, there would be $500,000 to make that repair. I could just, like my Shakespeare professor said once, speed kills. So spend an entire you know, semester on a Hamlet or whatever. Speed can kill us here. We will make bad decisions just because we don't want to take a little bit more time to talk about it. Thank you for those comments. Alder Person Heideman. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. That $500 number, uh, uh, Daryl, is 
that's not the actual number. It, it would, the streets that have to be worked on would be the ones that were getting the assessment. So instead of bringing in $500,000 a year, we could bring in as little as $100,000 a year if they don't do those streets. We haven't done street one. We don't know, uh, and already, already we're worried about losing $500,000, which I quite honestly, I think that's on the high side. Is, is there, is there a, a, a middle number or something that would actually be really realistic as to what the, the uh, proper assessments would be? Carol? Uh, the estimate for 2017 uh, bituminous resurfacing assessments is 534,000. That's if they get them all done. Based upon the projects that have gone out for bid and that the council has considered uh, awards for, there's a related return as far as special assessments of 534,000. Thank you. Um, next is Alderperson Trester. I just have one thing to say, and that is we seem to repeat over and over again. We go to a committee meeting, we vote on something, then we pass it, and then we go to another meeting, and it's reopened, and we have to hash it out over and over again. <coughs> it seems as though those that don't like what the majority said bring it up again to re-vote hoping to get us to change our vote i'm not voting in favor of sending this to finance i voted in favor of killing the um assessments at the committee of the whole and i will vote again for that here thank you um alder person boren thank you mayor uh, when this came to the Public Works Committee, I think we had probably a 45 minute to an hour discussion. The mayor was there, Mr. Hoffman was there, the city attorney was there, uh, Nancy Buss from the Finance Department was there. We had, a, we had a discussion, we moved it forward and it went to the Committee of the Whole and I thought we had a very, very good discussion at the Committee of the Whole. I'm not gonna support sending this back to finance. If this passes tonight, you're gonna have the $500,000 and if it doesn't pass, there's no reason it can't go on the next finance agenda next, uh, next Monday night if we have a finance committee to be discussed. Uh, I don't think it has to be referred there. That's the natural thing that'll happen if it doesn't pass. And if it does pass, you've got the 500,000. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Hold the person seal. I'll comment after we vote on the finance. Okay, there's no more lights. All those. Let's see, um, that's a roll call vote. Let's see. <coughs> it, this is motion to refer to finance. Oh, to clarify, an I would be to refer to finance and a nay would be to not to refer. Oh, an I would be to refer to finance. Three ayes, ten noes. Motion fails. Now we're back to uh, the original motion. Please repeat that. The original motion is to accept and adopt the report of committee to file. Under further discussion, other person feel. All right, now I'll talk. Um, I'm not in favor of eliminating any dollars towards the streets. Um, I think the city of Sheboygan kind of spoke in this last election on which way they're thinking of dollars on how they want the streets to get fixed. I think it's definitely a problem and I think the city has spoken that they want the dollars to go to streets. Um, they're willing to pay the money. I look at the town of Wilson, they put out a referendum out there. The town of Wilson is willing to do a, a wheel tax now to get the streets <coughs> fixed. The city has spoken, we really need to get these wheels fixed and I'm not willing to eliminate any dollars. Um, I was on the fence on this also because I wasn't sure. And after watching what happened, I think it was pretty obvious that the city wants their streets fixed and they don't want us to cut any corners. They want us to get them done now. And that's why I'm in favor of not filing it. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Yes, okay, uh, yes Bolt is the file. It's a motion to accept and adopt the report that says to file. 
So a yes vote is to file. A yes vote means to eliminate to file. Seven ayes, six noes. Motion passes. Next is item 6.4, RC number 375 of 1617 by the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee to whom is refer resolution number 181 of 1617 by Alderperson Donahue, Wolf, Thiel, Bellinger, and Holshue, eliminating and reestablishing various committees and amending the composition of others and recommends passing the resolution. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept, adopt, and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion. Is there second. a second? And we have a second. And it's before us for discussion. Oops. Seeing no discussion, will the clerk please call the roll? Eleven eyes, two noes. Motion passes. Next is item 6.5, RC number 376 of 1617 by finance, to whom was referred resolution number 222 of 1617 by Alderperson Wolf, providing for the sale of approximately $5 million of general obligation promissory notes series 2017A and recommends passing the resolution. Alderperson person born. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and adopt and <coughs> accept and adopt and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alderperson person born. We got that. Anybody else? Okay. Seeing no discussion, would the clerk please call the roll? Motion passes. Me. Item 6.6 .6 is RC number 377 of 1617 by finance. Tumors referred resolution number 223 of 1617 by Alderperson Wolf, approving the amended and restated contract for sale of land for private development between the city of Sheboygan and 8th and New Jersey LLC and recommends passing the resolution. Alderperson. Warren. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and adopt and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion? Under discussion, Mayor, I, for the audience at home, I believe this is the development that's going to be <coughs> going on the old Tripar location across from the former Martin Pontiac for this uh, beautiful apartment building. Thank you very much. I'd like to call up Chad Pelichek for a little bit more information on this project. did is I put together a uh, request for considerate common council consideration the same document we use at our committee levels and I just wanted to uh, review a few things as it re relates to this uh, project uh, back in 2016 April 8th the council accepted a contract uh, a developers agreement for LCM funds to build a 91 unit apartment structure on the property as Alderman Bourne referenced the former tripar st. Cyril convent property 
um, due to some unforeseen soil conditions and a redesign of the entire foundation based on the soil conditions that they had there, uh, the project was stalled until uh, they came back to us with a couple of proposals and the uh, proposal before you today is the one that city staff feels is the best and the most advantageous for us to move forward. So I just have a couple um, comments in there. The changes to the agreement includes a $400,000 increase in the incentive payment from a million seventy-five. Uh, 775,000 to 2 million 175,000 it's primarily to redesign the underground parking structure uh, in order to accommodate um, the soil conditions that are out there um, the four hundred thousand dollars in loss increment uh, it, the four hundred thousand dollars in increment that's going to be put towards this um, would be lost if we some some alderman had asked what if we just uh, scrapped this whole project and went out and found a different developer. Well, that $400,000 will be is what we would lose in increment if we waited one year. So it's really pretty much a wash. This project has been approved by the state. It's been approved by the Planning Commission, the Architecture Review Board, and it's really ready to move forward uh, pending approval of this agreement. Uh, plans are to start the project in June. Um, LCM Funds is the primary developer. There had been some current concerns by Aldermen about uh, SMET development. Spent construction being in there in their past track record. They are no longer a party to the development And there's also some local investors on the other flip side of it um, The four hundred thousand dollars would come from the state trust fund um, The reason is because uh, some people had asked what if we aldermen have questioned could we just add it on to the current borrowing um, our financial advisor has advised that, that our current borrowing of $5 million is a non-taxable bond, and this would be a taxable bond, so we therefore would not be able to add it on. The most uh, uh, cost-effective measure we feel as staff is to uh, finance this through the state trust fund and then allow the TIF district to pay back that debt. I've provided some pictures of what this development is going to look like as Alderman uh, Bourne referenced. It's a very qu high quality development. This is a section of the city I think that I hear the most comments about um, is this South A Street from the bridge to the swing streets and that people, tourists and residents feel like they're in no man's land because there's really nothing there. I think this development will definitely transform that corridor. Um, it talks about in here the fact that uh, that in the 2014 Harbor Center Master Plan, the uh, it identified 300 new apartments in downtown with the two projects under construction today. We're at about 136. This additional 91 apartments will bring us up to about 227 apartments. So I think we have everything pretty much in order to move this thing uh, forward um, other than this additional funding. One thing I will mention is that they did go to the state and got a $300,000 grant to match this 400000 to deal with the soil conditions. They're close to almost $750,000 additional costs. Um, the last note I just want to state is this property has been vacant, the primarily the intersection of Virginia and A Street that was deeded to the city on a tax foreclosure 20 some years ago from the county and we've struggled to develop that parcel all along and I think this is a good quality development so I would look for your support in approving this resolution to move forward. Thank you. Thank you for those comments and I appreciate the work that both you and Administrator Hofflin did to negotiate this agreement. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll. Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Item six point seven is RC number three seventy eight of sixteen seventeen by the Finance Committee. To whom was referred resolution number two twenty four of sixteen seventeen by Alderperson Wolf, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the twenty seventeen budget for an advance to TID number sixteen for a parking study. And recommends passing the resolution. Alderperson Bourne. Thank you again, Mira. I move to accept and adopt and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll?
12 ayes, one no. Motion passes. Item 6.8 is RC number 379 of 1617 by <coughs> Public Works, to whom was referred resolution number 230 of 1617 by Alderperson Bellinger, authorizing entering into a contract for the 27th North 15th Street paving and recommends that uh, resolution be passed. All the person Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept and adopt and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk call the roll? Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Item six point nine is RC number three eighty of sixteen seventeen by the Finance Committee to whom is referred resolution number two thirty four of sixteen seventeen by Alderperson Wolf authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the twenty seventeen budget for salaries and benefits in the city clerk department and recommends passing the resolution. Alderperson Boring. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept and adopt and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion? Under discussion, uh, we talked about this in finance, of course, and uh, the city clerk has a longtime employee that's retiring in July, and Sue Richards brought this forward to finance. She has a very good, in my opinion, has a very good transition plan uh, where they're going to hire the new employee, and the new employee will work with Cinda through the licensing process, and that'll make for an easy transition, so I recommend that we uh, pass this resolution. Thank you. Thank you for that discussion. Anyone else? Seeing no lights, will the clerk please call the roll? <coughs> 13 ayes. Motion passes. Item 6.10 is RC number 381 of 1617 by the Committee of the Whole, who was referred resolution number 227 of 1617 by Alderperson Holshue, Heidemann, and Thiel, directing the city administrator to perform an internal study of the fire department related to staffing and scheduling concerns and recommends that the attached substitute resolution be passed. Alderperson Heidemann. Oh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I move that the reported committee be accepted and adopted and so, uh, pass the substitute resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, Alderperson Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, at this point, um, I would move to um, amend the resolution um, from two weeks, giving um, the fire chief and um, the uh, HR director two weeks um, and amend it to six weeks. Um, I think. I still have great concerns about this approach to analyzing how the fire department should be functioning, but I think we really need to give <coughs> both the chief and the HR director enough time to, um, to perform the study. And then I think it will provide us with some basic information. I think we'll still eventually probably need to do something a bit more um, extensive than that, but I, I do think that um, six weeks is a much more realistic <coughs> time. And, Accordingly, I would uh, move to amend uh, the resolution uh, to substitute six weeks for two weeks. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. The amendment's before us, and uh, let's have just discussion on the amendment. Could you clarify that, Alderman? I think you said I'll alter it from six weeks to two. You meant the other way. Oh, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> okay. From two weeks to six weeks. Thank you. Okay, is there any discussion on the amendment? Who made the second? I'm sorry. Alderman Bourne. Thank you. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mary. Yeah, I would agree with uh, uh, Alderman Donahue. This is, this is going to be a, a big job, a cumbersome job, and I can just imagine going through all those job descriptions, and when this passed at Committee of the Whole with only two weeks, that is really rushing through something that's very important, and I support the chief and the HR director doing this, but I agree they need more time. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion? You call the roll. Yeah, and this is the role will be on the amendment to the resolution from two weeks to six weeks to report <coughs> out. And I vote would be to do six weeks.
13 ayes. Motion passes. Now we're back to the regular, the, the, the main motion as amended. Under discussion on that, Alderperson Heidemann. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, this is a good idea. It's a start. I hope it goes much farther. Again, I'm not going to be around anymore. I'm not making a, a last pitch ditch effort to try to do a little bit more analyzation of the fire department. But the plan that we got, that we had presented to us, the 2020 plan, that's got to be looked at. We, if, we're, if the start is with the, um, the job descriptions, that's fine. But that's not going to be enough. I, quite honestly, I don't think as a body you're going to be satisfied with everything that, that comes back there. And uh, I, again, I give them all the credit to our to HR director to get this done and get this information back to you. Um, but again, whether it was six weeks, eight weeks, ten weeks, a year and a half, you're not going to get what you really want uh, from this study. Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion? Seeing none, we'll uh, vote on the motion. Clerk, please call the roll. Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 611 is RC number 382 of 1617 by the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee to whom was referred General Ordinance number 39 of 1617 by Alderperson Donahue, Wolf, Thiel, Bellinger, and Holshue, uh, repealing and recreating various sections of the Municipal Code as to implement the provisions of Resolution number 141 of 1617, implementing the changes to the City of Sheboygan Committee, Commission, and Board structure, effective April of 2017 and April of 2018 and recommends passing the ordinance. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept, adopt, and put the ordinance upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support under discussion. Alderperson Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. I want to make a, a, a motion to amend the document as follows. The president of the council and the chairperson of the finance slash personnel committee may not be the same older person. My thinking behind this is this year I think we had a very good arrangement in that we had older person Donahue as president of the council, we had Alderman Wolf as chairman of the finance committee. Uh, going back on the uh, going to be the 11 years I've been on this council, <clears throat> we've had several occasions when the president of the council <laughs> has also been the uh, chairman of the finance committee. And there were rumblings back then by the aldermen that they didn't feel that the president of the council should also be chairman of the finance committee because when discussing a lot of big issues, it was their opinion and it was my opinion, and that's why I'm bringing this up, that I think it's, more, it's important to have more, it, the more aldermen that get involved in these big discussions like what we're going to do with City Hall, what we're going to do with the budget, what we're going to do with street assessments, that type of thing. I think it's very important to have as many aldermen involved in that as possible. Now that's not to say that if the mayor feels that the president of the council should be on the finance committee, that's fine. That the alderman, or the, the mayor can make that appointment. But in the past, and I think of three occasions since I've been on the council where there have been rumblings by the rest of the council that the, it, it just wasn't inclusive enough of all the, of all the aldermen. And that's why I'm making this motion. Thank second. you. Okay, we have a motion, uh, an amendment, uh, and a second. Any other discussion on the amendment? Oh. All the person Heidemann. Yeah. Boy, Mayor, I'm a busy guy. Um, I want to know how we can address concerns from Mr. Fro on the. Um, the that's, that's the Marina. next issue. That's, that's the next that's issue. That's the next okay. Point. Sorry. All right. No problem. Any other discussion on the amendment? Alderman Bourne, could you restate it, please, for me? Sure. <clears throat> the president of the council and the chairperson of the finance slash personnel committee may not be the same older person. Okay. Just to clarify, in, in your arguments, you talked about the finance committee, and now you're talking about two committees, correct? Well, the new committee, the new committee as, as it's going to be amended here, is my understanding the finance committee and the personnel committee are going to be the same committee. All right, that, that's right. They're doing it together. Mm -hmm. Just a point.
point of clarification, uh, where would you make that amendment? In what uh, somewhere in the document, I would think right around the area where we're talking, right after we're talking about the four standard committees, they're laid out what the new committee structure is going to be. So you'd add that language to which section? Uh, let me let me bring it up here. I don't have it. Pretty long document, but is it in the section one, um, which talks about amending section two seventy two? Right. And then, um, would you do that then as, yeah, sorry, I'm not using my normal computer, so it's, A1. would you would you add that um, as a separate subsection D, or would you uh, sort of put instructions I in think it could be, I, A1? Think, I think it could be a, a separate subsection, if, if you think that's the best way to do it. Um, Thinking about it, it may actually be better to do it as an amendment to sub A sub one in where it says finance and personnel semicolon five aldermen. Um, you could add something that, like then your language that the, um, the chair of the finance committee shall not be the president. That's good. Yeah. That's fine. Any other discussion? Could we please call the roll on the amendment? So I got to get back here. Thirteen ayes. Motion passes. Uh, and then we're back to the uh, main motion with that amendment included. Any other discussion on the main motion as amended? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to item six point twelve, as RC number three eighty three of sixteen seventeen by Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee, to whom was referred General Ordinance number forty of sixteen seventeen by Alder Person Donahue, Wolf, Thiel, Bellinger, and Holshu, repealing and recreating section seventy four dash two of the Municipal Code relating to parks, as to implement the provisions of Resolution number one forty one of sixteen seventeen. Implement changes to the City of Sheboygan Committee, Commission, and Board Structure effective April of 2017 and April of 2018 and recommends passing the ordinance. Uh, Alderperson Donahue. I move to accept, adopt, and put the ordinance upon its passage. Second. Thank you for the motion and support. Under discussion, Alderperson Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I would uh, like to amend this and have it uh, make the motion to five. Um, I had a, a, a lengthy conversation today with uh, Joe Curlin. I was unable to attend the Marina Parks and Forestry Commission meeting yesterday. And uh, he mentioned that uh, there was uh, unanimous support to keep the committee moving forward um, and do some things to uh, enhance uh, the uh, vibrancy of the committee and uh, the proactive nature of the committee. Uh, right now, the committee has, has been pretty much a reactive committee and the last couple of years it hasn't been real proactive and uh, Joe thinks that it would be in the city's best interest if we were to keep the committee and uh, reconstitute it a little bit make some tweaks and some changes give them a little more autonomy and uh, have them become a more proactive uh, citizen based uh, commission or committee so um, for, for that reason uh, I'm in favor of uh, filing this, and in fact, killing it, so that the um, Marina Parks and Forestry 
commission can continue um, as is, and uh, then they can work uh, towards uh, reconstituting it in the manner that they seem fit. But uh, in my conversation with, with Joe, that's the way that uh, he wanted to have it go, and, and he feels most comfortable, and he thinks that it can be a tremendous asset moving forward if some things are, are done a little bit differently. So I would like to see that happen. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Well, it, that's not a proper amendment to the original motion. So the, what probably should happen is vote, vote up or down, and it's going to take a three-quarters vote to pass this anyway. If it doesn't pass, you've, in essence, gotten rid of it anyway. You could file it after that. Could the that first motioners uh, uh, pull their motion off the floor? They can if you want to do that. Would you be interested in doing that, all the person Donahue? Well, I, it, it seems to be more sensible just to do an up or down vote here. Okay. I mean, if we're if we're against it, then we then we vote no. Very and good. And then it's filed. And, and just as a point of order, then I presume the the current structure remains the same. Correct. If if uh, this goes down to defeat, um, then the committee would remain in place as it is currently structured. And if we wanted to do further changes. In the future, we could come back you and come you back. Know, look at composition and, and structure right. and so forth. So I, I think, if it's okay, that it just makes sense. If you don't, if you don't want to change this, just don't know. Okay, is understood. Any other discussion? Yeah. The uh, motion to file is not, not, no, not the motion at this to time. File. So we'll be voting on the original motion made by Alderperson Donahue, and again. So a nay vote would tell us, correct? Right. Her yeah, so we would have okay. to uh, vote no on this, uh, um, this resolution, I mean this motion, and then Alderman Bellinger could make uh, another <coughs> one to file. Okay. Okay, is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk call the roll on the motion to accept and adopt and pass the ordinance? Three ayes, ten noes. Motion fails. All the person Bellinger? Well, it uh, fails. Mayor, so I, I don't think I need to do anything, right. do I? Nope. It's, We're it's, good it's, then. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Moving on to item uh, 6.13, uh, RC number 384 of 1617 by Strategic Fiscal Planning, to whom is referred General Ordinance number 41 of 1617 by Alderperson Donahue, Wolf, Theo, Bellinger, and Holshue, repealing and recreating Section 50.915 uh, of the City of Sheboygan Zoning Ordinance as to remove the duties of the Housing Rehabilitation and Loan Program from the Historic Preservation Commission and recommends passing the ordinance. Alder Person Donahue. I move to accept, adopt, and put the ordinance upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Under matters laid over, uh, item 7.1 is RO number 250 of 1617 by the City Planning Commission to whom is referred general ordinance of number 45 of 1617 by all the person Donahue and Jose to amend the city's future land use map of the Sheboygan Comprehensive Plan to change the land use classification of property located at 1031 Maryland Avenue from employment to central mixed use and recommends passing the ordinance. Alderperson Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept and file and pass the ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? See, now will the clerk please, please call the roll. Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. 
Item 7.2 is RO number 249 of 1617 by the City Planning Commission to whom is referred General Ordinance 43 of 1617 by Alderperson Donahue and Jose requesting an amendment of the official zoning map from use district classification urban industrial to use uh, district classification central commercial and recommends passing the ordinance. Alderperson Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept and file and pass the ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Thirteen eyes. The motion passes. Next, we'll move on to other matters. 8.1 is a report of officer by the fire chief pursuant to section 50.494 of the municipal code submitting his annual report for the period commencing January 1, 2016 and ending December 31, 2016. That will be referred to the Public Protection and Safety Committee. 8.2 is a report of officer by the city clerk submitting various license applications for periods ending June 30, 2017, December 31, 2017 and June 30, 2018. That will be referred to the Law and Licensing Committee. 8.3 is a resolution by Alderperson Wolf authorizing submittal of a grant application to the U.S. Department of Agriculture Forest Service 2017 Great Lakes Restoration Initiative Enhanced Coastal Wetlands Program. That will be referred to the Finance Committee. 8.4 is a report of officer by the City Clerk submitting the final plat of Aspen Trail Estates located to the east of North 61st Street in the town of Sheboygan transmitted by J.E. Arthur and Associates, Inc. That will be referred to the City Planning Commission. Uh, Alderperson Donahue. I move to adjourn. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair, opposed? Aye. Motion passes. We stand adjourned. Thank you very much. <coughs>